Hello, and welcome to the Asia Fruit Business Forum at Asia Fruit Logistica On. My name is Matthew Jones, and I'm the Deputy Editor of Asia Fruit Magazine and the Chairman of this Hall Forum event. Our three day program offers practical advice and takeaway messages for managing your fresh produce business, with sessions catering to every link in the supply chain. Each two hour session will stream live at 11 a.m. Singapore time over the next three days with recordings available on demand to all registered Asia Fruit Logistica on visitors. Today's sessions are themed around the supplier, examining key trends and developments across the production, post-harvest and packaging sectors. We will be introducing a new topic every half hour over the course of the session. We begin with a look at how varietal development is shaping the fresh produce sector of tomorrow. A presenter is Jed Sipal, who will examine the topic through the lens of his company, Syngenta where he is the head of vegetable seeds for Japan, Taiwan, Australasia, and South Korea. Hi everyone, my name is Jed Sippel. I lead the vegetable seeds team for Syngenta across Japan, Taiwan, Korea, and down here in Australia and New Zealand. Syngenta has a long and proud history of partnership uh, with the Asia Fruit Business Forum. And like many, uh, I've been working from a home office environment throughout this year. So it is an opportunity for, for me today to connect with you all in a virtual world. So thanks for joining. Today I'm discussing how seed innovations impact the value chain. I've worked in the vegetable seeds business now for Syngenta for 12 years and I've seen firsthand the impact and the influence that uh, breeding, vegetable seed breeding can have and how it's tailored to suit certain value chains. And we'll discuss some of those today. A bit about Syngenta. So Syngenta globally uh, is committed to overcoming some of the population uh, growth outcomes that we are experiencing and also the resources that are available to us being in decline, how we overcome those in a practical way. It's very important for us to focus our energies across the value chain, but no more so uh, towards the farmer, where we're looking to provide innovation and outcomes for growers across the planet. And in the case of vegetables, we're producing over two and a half thousand varieties every year. We're developing solutions to help growers get more out of their crops over the long term. And harnessing the power of plant breeding to overcome some adversities and local conditions, and also to meet the, the demands of the consumer and retail network across the planet. And we're driving new breakthroughs and ways of working to transform and improve our agricultural industry at large. So why Syngenta Vegetables? Syngenta now uh, has a very proud legacy of over 150 years. So there's a number of legacy companies that formed to what is now the Syngenta Vegetable Business operating in every corner of the, of the globe. There are many producers and distributors, uh, I guess, across the globe that are working in the same space that, that, that we do. So why should growers continue to put their faith in us? And I guess we're very proud in the fact that growers, farmers are at the heart of everything that we do. It's very important for us to bond closely and form those partnerships at a local level because it's that local information that drives innovation to come. We have over two and a half thousand employees globally dedicated to the pursuit of high yielding, high performance, best in class varieties. We have world class R&D platforms that allow us to bring new varieties to market. It allows us to keep pace with customer changes and increasingly challenging climate conditions. And it's important that we make a real world difference and create that impact. So our work transforms how crops are grown 
and it enables growers across the planet to sustainably and responsibly make better use of the resources available to them. When we think about innovation, it's important that the innovations that we bring forward are practical and, are, and have a longevity in the industry. As such, we've invested heavily over the years, uh, particularly in recent years, in our technology centres in the Netherlands, also in Woodland, California, and Pune in India. And this commitment allows us to uh, rapidly introduce new traits to, that are required into the market and bring those leading varieties forward. It's very important that our R&D teams focus on the stresses that farmers face in the way of disease and insect pressure. We're also facing increasing climate challenges and how do our varieties adapt to those changes? It gives us the ability to innovate quickly and the use of leading edge technologies. Our laboratories are able to identify quickly and then tailor outcomes to suit the market. Annually, we're investing over $100 million each year into research and development programs, furthering our speed and efficiency to market and also allowing growers to access those technologies quicker. It's our aim though, to make a real world difference. We're facing increasing environmental challenges in every corner of the planet. So we must design and develop varieties that have the appropriate disease resistances they must be able to be produced in a cost-effective manner with less nutritional inputs. The produce is traveling further, so shelf life becomes increasingly important. Local stresses in environment, we look at overcoming those through genetic development. And it's marketable yield, ultimately what growers sell to market that really matters in terms of value return back to the grower. Yes, we play heavily in the commodity space, but there's also new innovations to, to suit and, and to create impact in new segments, new retail segments. Some examples of those in recent years have been the development of personal sized watermelon. So no longer uh, the offer of the large eight to 10 kilo, 12 kilo watermelon, we're bringing the size down that makes it a bit more suitable for the family. different colors in brassicas, in the cauliflower. So again, niche products that suit a niche outcome. It gives retail and consumer appeal. And it broadens the segment within, within those categories. Again, snacking tomatoes are a, are a good example of that. So bringing forward different types of tomato that can be segmented against the commodity types. It, again, it gives both retail appeal and it provides consumers with a different offer. And again, the sweet, the seedless sweet pepper is providing consumers a different experience and a different convenience in that snacking segment, something different in that sweet pepper market. We have a global R and D footprint that stretches literally across the planet. The, our our, our R&D teams are working locally, but they're taking knowledge globally and implementing it, that into their programs. They're looking at that adaptability in all different environments, all different conditions, and how they can be expanded into new and opening markets. The value chain is ultimately what it's all about in terms of getting a product from an R&D perspective and getting consumer appeal at the end of the day. All value chain members must benefit 
from that R&D outcome. So we're dedicated to not only looking at the ground level, at the R&D level, but also dedicated to look at what supports consumer interests and bringing those innovations forward. So the journey from seed to plate begins with our growers. And as I mentioned, we spend a great deal of time working alongside growers to understand their local challenges and their economic needs. It must be profitable for them. The knowledge we gain from those close partnerships helps, helps us then create seed varieties that perform very well in the field locally. And in some cases, that adaptability is taken into other markets. Yield is a big ticket item for all growers across the planet. And it's something that we do focus heavily on. So at the end of the day, we're looking for a great result for our growers that they can ultimately sell something that is in demand by the market. We drive innovation to improve flavour, quality, convenience, productivity for the grower, marketers, retailers and consumers. It's important that we work closely with marketing organisations. How do we fit into their existing brands? How can we develop new brands, new tastes, colours and nutritional qualities? Are there points of difference there to leverage? We work closely with the major processes and we look at how vegetables can be easily harvested, mechanically harvested, reducing wastage through the factory, reducing processing time. And as I mentioned, along the supply chain, we must improve the transportability of our fresh produce. Fresh produce is moving many hundreds, in some case, thousands of kilometers around the globe. It's important for us as an R&D organisation to deliver on that promise, on that quality outcome. The retailers, we spend a great amount of time working with retailers on supplying an outcome that gives them something that's in appeal on the shelf. Something that's conveniently packaged uh, and it's appealing to consumers. And at the end of the day, it's about the consumer, providing them an outcome that's available when they need it, when they want it, and it remains fresh. And it's important for us as an R&D organisation to stay abreast of the changes in consumer shifts. And in some cases, developing new segments that don't currently, uh, aren't currently available at a retail level. So where we work. In Asia Pacific, we have over 900 employees working for Syngenta Vegetables. Everywhere from Pakistan, India, South Asia generally, Southeast Asia, China, Northeast Asia, and, and down here in Australia and New Zealand. We're participating in 26 crops. We're a lead contributor in the tomato market across Asia Pacific. Each year, we'll aim to launch more than 70 new varieties into the market. Sweet corn has a growing interest and growing footprint across Asia Pacific. We're proud to be a leading contributor in that space. At the end of the day, it matters little if that innovation doesn't hit the target, doesn't provide something that consumers are actually looking for. And it must meet, as I mentioned, all the contributors in the value chain along the way. Some examples of this in recent years are the Yume tomato. Yume was a flagship variety for us uh, this year. It won the gold medal at the Fruit Logistica Awards in 2020. Yume tomato is, a, I guess, a unique cocktail tomato and it's again, capitalizing on the snacking segment, but it's also creating something new in that segment, something that consumers have yet to see, yet to taste. The taste itself is a blend between sweet and sour. It gives this umami taste, hence the name Yume. 
again, something different for consumers. And I guess it was satisfying for our R&D teams in Syngenta that we were, were awarded uh, a gold medal in this case, um, because it shows our commitment in how we've assisted growers to provide them something new, something in demand, but something that was uh, available across the value chain that, that everyone benefited from. If we look at Australia and the Australian watermelon industry, we have some leading varieties, one in particular that dominates the market in Australia. And it's been developed by, or it's grown rather, because of the, the impact it has on both ends of the value chain. From a grower's perspective, it matches or meets the demands of, of the demanding conditions we face in Australia. It has a high fruit set or high yield, which is demanded by growers. Shelf life is it very important in this market where we're traveling large distances. So producing watermelon that can handle, handle the freight uh, demands that are in this country. And it has retail and consumer appeal. As you can see, most watermelon in Australia is sold as a cut fruit. Therefore, the appeal on the shelf is quite, uh, quite important. But the innovation in watermelon doesn't stop there at the commodity level. We're now seeing expansion into uh, processing type watermelons. New offers, it, it offers those in the value chain something new to position in the marketplace. Personal seedless watermelon, again, is making leaps and bounds in the market globally. And it's an offer of convenience, but not discounting taste and color and quality. So that's an exciting new, uh, new progression for us in the watermelon space. Similarly, in Thailand, where we partner with Sunsweet and looking at products in sweet corn, tropical sweet corn, where the demands are quite uh, stringent around import protocols. And therefore, it's a complete package of looking at the genetics and the inputs we can, we can have around those. And partnership with Sunsweet delivering specific types of sweet corn to meet the, meet the demands of their market. And through our local R&D platform in Thailand, we've been, been able to deliver sweet corn with a better taste, a better sweetness and a starchiness that's easy to process. It allows them to ship those products some distances also. And without that local presence, I'd argue we wouldn't be in that same position. It's a great partnership. Also in India, de developing and designing specific hot pepper types for the processing market. There's a certain uh, pungency and pigment that's required in the Indian market. So it's important for our local R&D and breeding teams to deliver on that promise. And if you get it right, there is success that follows. Success for us as a, as a breeding company but success for everyone along the value chain. It's genuinely where we hit the sweet spot on those varieties. So that has been an important partnership and certainly a very successful outcome for our team in India. When we look at bullhorn peppers in the Chinese market, we were one of the first companies to introduce uh, fruit with shiny uh, skin characteristics. With that point of difference, it's, got, it's brought with it a large amount of retail appeal. But we can't have that unless we deliver on the grower promise also. So it sets uh, high fruit numbers, it travels well, and as I said, it creates some interest and appeal at a retail level. And it's allowing growers and those in the value chain a premium for the demand of that product in the market. 
So they're just some examples of where Syngenta is working along the value chain. As I mentioned at the start, it's an important uh, focus for us as an organization that we must meet all contributors in the value chain to drive a successful outcome. I thank you all for your time today and I wish you the best for the Asia Fruit Business Forum. Thank you.